Hey guys, this is Ed Bro. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different, and that is we are going to be looking into Solidity. This is a programming language for the Ethereum blockchain. And we will be covering the topic of visibility modifiers, which involve the keywords public, private, internal, and external. And we will be talking about their differences. So these keywords are used to modify the accessibility and visibility of any functions and variables. And the reason why you want to restrict access is so that you can prevent users from abusing data they shouldn't be having access to. This is very important because in the blockchain space, you might have lots of very sensitive and important information that you don't want other contracts or other accounts to manipulate. There are four types of visibility modifiers, and here they are in the order of decreasing privacy. First, we have private, which means it can only be accessed from the current contract. Internal, which can be accessed only from the current contract and contracts that derive from it, so basically inherited. And then external, which means accounts or contracts outside of this current contracts can access that, but internally they can't. Public, which means both external and internal accounts can access this particular function or variable. So the general rule of thumb when using these modifiers is to give the minimum amount of access that's necessary. But be sure to note that everything that is inside a contract is still visible to all observers, external to the blockchain. What that means is everyone can see what's happening, even things that are marked as private. The thing that visibility modifiers do is that if you don't want other contracts or other accounts to manipulate data that's private or internal, they won't be able to do so. Let's actually look at some code to see how these modifiers actually work. So I'm in Remix, which is an IDE, basically a code editor. And I have the link in the description below to figure out where that is. So once you get to this website, we're gonna go to the contract file and we are going to add a, full, a file called visibility modifiers. And we're gonna give an extension of soul to indicate a solidity file. And in the solidity file, we're gonna start with pragma solidity. Generally, you always want to start your files with this practical import. And I will increase the size real quick so you can get a better view of it. So what this basically does is that you're basically importing solidity into your editor so you can write the code and you have to indicate what type of version or what version you want to use. And the next thing we're going to add is we're going to add the contract and we are going to call this visibility modifiers like so. And essentially this is basically like a class that you're creating, but we're calling this contract. Okay, so we're gonna create two different functions and one of them is gonna be modified as external, another one is gonna be public. So we can see the difference between those two. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a function and we're gonna call it external func, like so. And we're gonna give it a modifier external and we're gonna make it pure and we're gonna return uint. And as you can see, we have this modifier external to determine that this is the level of visibility access we want them to have. And here we're going to return a random number. This doesn't really matter. I just want to give it a unique number that it returns. And so we're going to copy this and we're going to create public func like so and change this modifier to public. And we're going to change this number to 20. So the base. Basically, the only difference between these two is external, public, and the number they return. And we're going to save this with Command S or Control S if you're on Windows. And we're going to click this Ethereum button. And in this Ethereum button, we're going to hit Deploy, as long as your environment is JavaScript VM. Once we hit Deploy, we're going to see this. And we're, just as we expect, we see both of these functions. So basically, I'm some random user, random account and I can see both of these functions and I can access them both. You can see that I can see 15 when I call this function 
and we're going to see 20 when we call this particular function. So now, if you can see both of them, what's the difference between these two? So to test for that difference, we're going to create another function. And this function, we're going to call test accessible from internal. And we're also given give it public pure as a standard. And in here, we're going to actually return um, public func for starters. So when we do this, we expect to see 20. So I'm going to save it again. I'm going to delete this contract because this is the old one. And I'm going to deploy it again. And as you can see, we have these three functions. They all work. And test accessible from internal is 20 as we expect. But what happens if I change this to external func? So now when I save it, what happens is I get an error. I can't even deploy this contract. This error prevents me from doing anything with it. It just says undeclared identifier external func is not visible at this point. So what it's basically saying is that this function can't even see this one. You can't even access this. This doesn't even exist. So this is one of the ways you can restrict access from internally for whatever reason. So now let's look at the difference between internal and private. So we're going to copy this and we're going to paste it twice. And we are going to change this to internal and give this an internal modifier. And let's return 25 to make it different. And we're going to give private for the last one and give this a private modifier as well and change this number to 30. So now if we save it, oh yeah, let's change this back to public just so this works. So once we save it, we're going to redeploy. And when we look at this, these are both internal and private and both do not allow external access. So you cannot see this in the contract. So a random account and random contract cannot access access these guys externally. However, if you do this and you change the test accessible from internal and we change this to internal func, we're going to save it and we're going to remove that. We're going to deploy. Once we see this, we can go test accessible from internal and we can actually access the value from the internal function with 25. So that means you can still access it, access this function internally from another function, but you cannot access it outside of the contract. And actually, this is the same for private. If you save this, private, let's remove this, and redeploy it, we can see test accessible from internal also works with private function. So if that's the case, what's the difference between these two? As we've mentioned before, internal function allows the contract itself and the contracts derived from it, whereas private function is only the contract itself. So basically what that means is that if we go down, we're going to create another contract and we're going to call this derived, derived contract. And this time we're going to inherit visibility modifiers like so. And we inherit with the is keyword and we are going to inside this contract, create a function. And we're going to call it test derived. We're going to call it, we're going to give it public and pure and returns uint. And inside this function, we're going to try and return internal func. So if we do that, we're going to save it. We're going to delete our previous contract and redeploy it. We're going to take a look. And once we click test arrived, this actually works. So we have this number being exposed. However, if we change this to private func, like so, and we save it, and we delete this and we redeploy it, we're going to see this is the old contract, but we're getting an error here, undeclared identifier. 
So this private func is not visible to contracts that are deriving from this. So basically, if you have an inherited contract, internal allows you to pass down these functions to the child contracts. But if you do private, the derived contracts cannot access the functions. Like so, as you can see with the private func, we cannot access that. So only this contract can access private func internally. And that's pretty much it. So this topic, this topic of visibility modifiers is kind of important. You want to make sure you can limit the access of certain functions or data to the right users because this is this privacy and the control that someone can have over your smart contract is very important to make sure that they have the right amount of access. And generally the rule of thumb is always, as I mentioned, give them the least amount of access as possible. Anyways, comment, like, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.